In today's episode, you're going to learn how you can make a Python desktop application. But more specifically, you're going to be making a Google Translator app all in Python that you're going to have on your desktop. That is pretty cool. Do you want to code? Huh? Yeah, good boy. Good boy. All right, back to it. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Code with Josh. If you're new here and you guessed it, I'm Josh. And today's episode is a little bit different from my other episodes. I actually want to use today's episode as the first project episode for you guys. And I want to take parts of what we've been learning over the seven steps to master the fundamentals of Python. If you've missed that, I'm going to link it here. And I want to use these key steps to create your very own desktop application. These topics are going to include your understanding of data structures in Python, your understanding of modules in Python, and lastly, your understanding of OOP, or Object Oriented Programming. That's right. Before we get into our first project together, I just want to let you guys know the first link in the description. You can get my handcrafted Python and Git starter pack absolutely free. It's the first link in the description. And this is the same guide that I give to all my students on their first day of class. So head on down there and pick up your copy that you can use in your Python journey. All right, I'm going to try and get through this because you're going to have a working app in 15, 20 minutes. I don't actually know. I'll put how long right here, all right? But I want to head right into VS Code and I want to show you guys how we can get our app started. So here I am in VS Code and I've already taken the liberty to write out some notes for you guys on how I'm going to structure my application. I love pseudo notes and you should be making those in your code too. It's a way for you to process your ideas and visually see those as you code along. So I also have another file of languages.py and here is a dictionary provided by Google of all the languages, right? So I'm going to put that as a link in the description of where you can get this to bring that into your code. I'm storing that in a different file. Okay, so here's all the languages we'll be able to translate to. And while I'm here, I'm actually just going to create two lists. I'm going to create a list of the keys here and I want to have access to this at a later stage and so I can use a list comprehension and we can say for every key I would like that in this. I'm also going to need one for values so I'm just going to create that here and we can pretty much do the same thing so key for key in our languages but this time I would like to get the values. Okay, so now I have two lists that I'm going to use at a later stage and you'll see when I come back to this, right? But in this file is just all the languages we can translate to. Alright guys, cool. If you're actually liking this video, can you do me a favor and hit that like button and smash the subscribe button as I got more content coming out all for you. Going back to our main file, let's get everything set up. So at the top, we need our modules. Now, I'm going to be using PyQt. I love PyQt. And I'm only brushing the surface here. In fact, I'm not even brushing the surface, okay? If you're unfamiliar with PyQt, you can head on down to the link in the description. I have a full-blown course out taking you from knowing nothing into knowing quite a lot. And throughout this course, you get to learn not only image processing in Python, but I also guide you through SQL and data visualization with Matplotlib. Lip. You can head down to my PyQt course and check that out. In today's episode, I just want to show you guys a project that you can get started on today. Let's start by importing PyQt. So from PyQt, I'm going to be using PyQt5. It doesn't actually matter as there's not a huge difference between PyQt5 and, and PyQt6. So going in here, I'd like to import a few things. Q application, Q widget. I need to have these in order to run my application. Now everything else is just optional. I'm going to use something called text edit. I'm going to use something called combo box. I will have a push button. We will have text on our screen. And you can see that all of these I'm importing from Qt widgets, these are classes. That's why it's key that you have a good understanding of object-oriented programming that you can pull from and bring that into here. Now that we have our widgets imported, uh, let me start off by importing everything else we need. So I'm going to go from Google Translate. 
I would like to import something called translator. If you haven't set that up yet, you can go down to your terminal and you can uh, pip3 install Google Trans. Finally, I would like to say from my languages file that we have our dictionary in, I want to import everything. Okay, so my dictionary is being brought over into here. Let's close our sidebar. I am now ready for our class. Now this class is going to run everything. It's going to have my design, all my functions, my actual translation in there too. Let's come down. I'm going to call this class home. I'm going to inherit a Q widget. In order to get a PyQt application going, I need a Q widget that's like the main window. The first method inside any class is going to be our constructor. Okay. In this constructor, I want to first off start by initializing my Q widget window. That's the main window our app is going to appear in. Next up, let's just set all the other methods up. I'm going to have one called init UI. This is going to be responsible for my design. I'm going to have one called settings. And for now, you can just see that I'm putting in the pass argument. It's just nice that I can actually see on the screen what I need to be working on at any given time. Let me program out the other ones here. Cool. I now have all the methods set up on the screen of what I'm going to be using here in our application. Right. Um, the last thing we could do just to get our final test going is down here I can put my run block. So if name in our string of main. I'm going to say app equals our Q application. Q application takes an empty list as an argument. I'm going to create a main object from my class that I just made. And I'm going to take my main object and say main, I would like to show you. And then my app, I want my app to execute or run. As a simple test, you can run your app. And there we go. It's a blank screen. I'm ready to get started. All right. Well, let's start off with our init function of what objects do we need? I'm going to have an input box and an output where all the translations are going to appear. I'm going to have multiple buttons to do things for me. And I'm going to have two language input options. I can choose the language that I want to translate through. right? And then I just have a title for my app. The next thing we need to do in PyQt is our design. Once you create the objects, you need to put these objects on a layout. Now how PyQt works is you need like a parent. And this parent could either be a column or a row. So for example, if I said the parent is a row, within the row I might have three columns of different objects and functions of my app. And within each column I could have multiple rows. It's like we're stacking on the design. Okay, so if I bring over my design, I always like to start by creating a master layout. And in today's application, it's going to be a row, so QH, horizontal. Within that row, I'm going to have two vertical columns. So QV box is for uh, columns in PyQt. So column one and column two. Now I have to go through and I have to add everything I want into column one. So I'm going to take my layout, column one, I'm going to say add widget. We use this method add widget to add an object to a layout in PyQt. Every object in PyQt is known as a widget. So inside here, the first widget I want to see is my title. Let me add the other ones to column one. I have my title, my two input uh, options, and my two buttons. I can move on to column two. All right, great. So I have column one and column two done. Let's go up here and let's try to call my init UI method and let's check out our design. Wait, what's that? It's still blank. Why is it still blank? Well, we're not done yet. You need to add your columns to your master layout first. All we have to do is take our master and because we're working with layouts now, I'm going to say add layout. What layout do I want to add? Column one. How much space do I want column one to occupy? Well, I only want column one to occupy 20%. And then my other one, column two, I would like column two to occupy 80%. Now that I have everything in my master layout, I can refer to myself. And myself is my main Q widget. So I'm going to say self. I would like to set the final layout to become my master layout. Run your code again. Boom, there you go. That looks pretty great. All right, let's get some settings for our app going now. So down here in the settings, I'm going to give our app an actual title. I'm going to call this uh, Pilate, like 
Python later, Python translator. And I'm gonna say here, set geometry. Now set geometry needs a starting location. Where should my app first appear? So it's gonna appear at an X and Y of 250. And then the width of my app is gonna be 600 and the height will be 500. Let's make sure I get my commas right. If I go up and I actually apply my settings now, you're gonna see that our app just looks better. There you go, everything's evenly proportioned. Okay, I'm ready to go. Next thing up, let's get these boxes going in our drop-down box for the language options. All we have to do to get those going is I'm gonna go under here my Q combo boxes, because those are those objects. And I'm gonna take my input uh, option, for example, and I'm gonna say add items. Now add items is a method that takes an iterable. So I need a list. What list do I wanna add? Well, if you remember in languages, I made these lists and I want these values, Portuguese, Romanian, Russian, I want those to be the values of the languages I can choose. So let's use the values list. I'm gonna say inside their values, Okay, come down here, we can say self output box or options I should say, add items. We also wanna say values here, okay? If I run that code, which I can do for you. Okay, now you have languages to choose from. Awesome, let's get to translating. All right, let's start with my uh, Google function. Now I'm actually gonna use the Google Translate module in this one here now, okay? And I can use that then in other ones throughout my program. So essentially, this method, how Google Translate works is I need to give it a text. What text do I wanna translate? What is my destination language? And what is my source language or my starting language? Inside this method, I then need to create an object. I like to call mine speaker. And I'm gonna use the Google Translate translator class that we imported. Okay, so now I have a speaker object. And I'm gonna now have the speaker make a translation for me. So translation is equal to my speaker and I want my speaker to translate. What do I want my speaker to translate? My parameter text. Okay, that's great. What is the destination of this text? Well, it's whatever my destination language is. Okay, what is the starting source? It is the source language that I provided. Finally, I can just return the, not the whole translation, I only want the text of the translation. <laughs> That's really it. That's how we use Google Translate. All right, but now we need to actually pass in data and translate that data. Let's now work on the translate click method. So when I click the translate button, I need to capture everything that's in my text input box, my two languages, so I can prepare that for the output and translation. So the first thing I need to do is get the value to my keys. And the value to my keys are essentially the current text that's inside my language options, right? So what language have I selected here? And for both of these, we can just get the current text. To get the current text from the drop-down box, we can just say current text here. Next up, I need to create a list, or not even really a list. I need to take this text that I have and I need to match it to a key in my language dictionary from earlier. So to do this, I am gonna make two lists. I'm gonna say key to value, uh, let's say key to value one, and this is equal to a list. And I'm gonna say, okay, for every key and value in my languages, let's get the items. And then the only condition is if the value is equal to my value to key one. And I can do the same thing for number two. All right, now we have all the data we need to translate. Let's do the translation. So I'm gonna create a new one called uh, script. And let's call the translate text method that we made down below. What do we wanna translate? Well, I wanna translate whatever is inside my input box. And the method to deal with that is called to plain text. What is my destination language? Well, it's gonna be my key to value one, the zero index, because there's only one item in the list. So I'm saying zero, that gets the first item. There we go. And then I wanna take my output box and I wanna say, okay, let's change the text of the output box to be our script or our actual translation. <laughs> That's amazing, we're almost done. Uh, next up, let's reset the app. If I click the reset button, then I just want my input box to clear. I would like my output box to clear. 
And our final one is the reverse button. If I click the reverse button, my languages should switch and my languages should, no, my text should switch and my languages should switch also. Okay, so I'm changing it up, just like in the real Google Translate app. To do this, we wanna get four variables, and you can see that I've done that. I have all my input variables, so uh, text and language, and then my output variables, text and language, created here, S1, L1, S2, L2. Okay, so I have those values. Now I just need to take my objects and change the text to do that. We can take our two input and out boxes. We can use the set text method. And then because we're working with the queue combo box, I can't use set text. I need to use set current text. And this is gonna swap those values around for us, okay? These objects you've made earlier up here in the initialization process. All right, our app is done. We're ready to run it. Give it a run. Let's say hello, good morning into Indonesian. If I translate, oh man, it just worked. That's so cool. All right, let's try a different language. Let's try Danish, translate. It works, and if we click reverse, it even reverses the languages. When I click reset, it resets the screen. You have a working translator app in Python. Now, the final stage is I wanna add some colors and make it look nicer. What can I do for that? First things first, I'm gonna go up to the top here and I'm gonna import something saying from pi qt5.qtgui. I would like to import uh, q font. And I'm gonna go down here to my font and I'm gonna take my font object, so I'm gonna take title and I'm gonna say set font. I would like to apply some styling to my text. So let's say Helvetica, that's a, a font family. And then the font size, let's say 45. It's just gonna make the text look nicer. Now, what if I told you you could use CSS in Python? Well, you can. Let me show you the styles that I've added. To save you the tedious time, I've just dropped it in here. Now, I'm inside my UI method. And PyQt has a method called setStyleSheet that allows you to use CSS just like you would usually with CSS. So down here in setStyleSheet, I can take my object, right? So QWidget is the entire window. I could take all the push buttons and we could apply all the same styles that you'd normally see in CSS. I can apply the hover effects just like you would too. Now if I run my app, it's gonna look way better. Look at my app now. My buttons have hover effects. My drop down boxes look better and the overall app is just a lot more appealing. Now when I translate this, you can see our app still works. That's incredible. Well done guys, you now have a working Python translator application. Look at that guys, in only this short amount of time, you guys now have a fully working Python desktop application. And on top of that, it's a translator app. How cool is that? If you guys want the source code for this project, I've put it in the link in the description. As well as if this is your first time with PyQt, remember, I have a full blown course, over six hours of content, breaking everything down for you to guide you through to get you making apps in no time. If you guys like this stuff, drop a comment below. I need to know, what do you guys want to see? More projects, more lessons, what helps you learn better? And if you want that PyQt course, it's in the link in the description. As well as my free handcrafted Python and Git starter pack. Absolutely free, it's for you guys. That's the first one down below. Head on down there and check it out. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button and smash the subscribe button as I have weekly content Content coming out for you guys to help you through your Python journey. Well, that's all for this episode of Code with Josh. I hope you like this twist. Until next time.